Many of you will see on your midterms that I write over and over again something like this, right? Be consistent. So what this means is that if you choose a lexical entry like this for put or tell, that you then have to draw your trees exactly like that. Let's try wager. So this is something like I wagered the ghost $5 that he would trip on his costume, right? So this is a verb phrase with a V bar and a V head, and the V head is wager. And then the complements are two NPs. I wagered the ghost, that's one NP. $5, that's the amount NP. And then the whole sentence, what did you wager the ghost $5? That he will trip on his costume. Wager the ghost $5, that he will trip on his costume. NP, NP, SP, no choice. Okay, that has to be the complements of the verb. And finally, haunt to kick off the Halloween celebration properly. So what do you do? You haunt, let's say you haunt the haunt Williams Hall, right? So haunt, and it has to have an NP complement according to its lexical entry. So you haunt Williams Hall, right, right here. So please, please do the world a favor, and from now on, if you create a lexical entry for something, then your tree must reflect it, right? So these two things have to be identical. And oh, by the way, right, you have to make sure that your PSRs also allow this tree to be made, right? So in all of these cases, we're all set, right? Because the PSR for V bar tells me that V bar is a V followed by just a bunch of these phrasal complements that include things like NP and PP and AP, which we don't happen to have illustrated here, and SP and even VP, which we talked about before, right? So all of these are in the PSR, so we're set with that, and we just have to make sure that whenever we introduce tell or put into a structure that we pay attention to what the lexical entry says, and then that our lexical entry and the tree that we ultimately construct are completely consistent. So that's the solution for exercise two.